Now that Rosetta's Philae lander has somewhere to park, there's more science ahead for the orbiter, and lander scientists are examining the comet's surface. There is no ice at the top, so it's covered by a mantle that we consider is essentially made of organic material, that's why it's very dark, and this material is one of the key things we would like to explore and analyse. The landing site was unveiled at ESA's HQ in Paris on September the 15th. As the press examined images of Comet 67P churyumov gerasimenko some in 3D, Site J, on the head of the duck-shaped comet, was revealed as first choice. This decision could only be made after Rosetta began orbiting the comet in August and started to see more individual surface features with greater clarity. When we have designed uh, Fila de Lander, we knew absolutely nothing about this comet. We had no idea on the mass, we had no idea on the shape, not even the rotation period was known. So we just had some estimates on how a comet might look like and tried to make a very flexible technical design. Since Rosetta came out of hibernation, a tremendous amount of science has already been achieved by instruments on the orbiter. The Osiris and NavCam cameras, for instance, have shown gas and dust streaming away from the comet. In late August, this Cosima instrument target, which is just one centimetre square, captured its first dust grains. The grain detection system and impact sensors measured the mass and velocity of grains, which will allow scientists to identify which part of the comet they came from. The orbiter has also detected water, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in the comet's coma, as expected. But the variations of carbon monoxide are unexpectedly varied, and the surface was found to be dark and porous. It's very difficult to quantify exactly how much of the science will be done by the orbiter and by the lander. But in general, we are flying with the comet for more than 16 months in a row. And the lander is something like, well, there are 72 hours in the beginning and then possibly a few slots later. So I think at least 80% of the science of the mission comes from the orbiter and 20% from the lander. Landing on a comet will undoubtedly be a challenge. Philae's chosen site is close to areas of activity. But it's not known yet whether Philae will have a hard or soft landing, as the surface composition is so far unknown. And as Rosetta gets closer, higher resolution images could reveal further difficulties. There are boulders in this zone, so we can land also on boulders. And some boulders can uh, be dangerous for, for the lander. But during the next two months before the landing in mid-November, the orbiter will continue to examine the comet. And if Site J proves too risky, there's always the backup landing location, Site C, on the larger part of the Space Duck's body. <laughs>